Jonathan Ramakan, Five Regions Sports. Maurice, you've done a lot of talking during this period. It just seems like he's getting into his head. How big does the mental part of the game come into aspect when it comes to MMA? Um, Man, over the years, I've, you know, I've mentally defeated myself sometimes before I even got to the cage. Um, but everybody's different and everybody's process is a little different. Um, uh, I had a, I've had the luxury to be around Henry Cejudo um, here and there because of uh, obviously John Jones and, um, you know, Henry kind of let us know oh, it's mental warfare, you know, before the fight. It's mental warfare before the fight. And not to say that that's everything, you know, uh, in the case with uh, Ran Ran, you know, we know his style. We know how he gets down and we know that he's going to come throwing them haymakers from Australia all the way to fucking New York City. So, um, you know, it, it plays a little role into it. And maybe it'll get him off his game a little bit. Maybe it won't. Maybe, you know, but I'm I'm going to do it, you know. Awesome. Thank you so much and good luck. You're welcome. Euro. Hello, Maurice. Congratulations on reaching to this point. I wanted to ask, what was your initial reaction when you found out you were going to be competing in the semifinals of this tournament? Um. So I've said this in other interviews, you know, I've, I've, I kicked box for a little bit. I took a small stint, you know, I got an opportunity to fight in a one night tournament, made it to the final, fought Xavier Vigny, who's, I think he's like six, nine or six, eight or something, but Xavier is big and he's athletic. Uh, I think it's Nganu's, one of Nganu's old trainer partners actually now. It's kind of crazy that we went the ways we did after our glory careers, but um, I've never showed up as an alternate and not fought. Uh, so as soon as I got the confirmation I was an alternate, I treated it as if something was going to happen. It's the best tournament in MMA. I've said this multiple times. Um, not only do you have to fight good, you have to outlast injury. Um, you know, it's mentally taxing. It's physically taxing. You know, getting back from a fight, win, lose, or draw, and getting right back into camp. You know, sometimes you take a week or two off. You got some injuries. You, but I've I've gotten right back to camp, and uh, it was – there was uh, this, even though I lost my last fight and I was out, um, I had the idea that something was going to happen, Maurice. You're going to get your opportunity to come back. Uh, so I've treated it like this. When I got the call, it was business as usual. It gave me something even more to fight for, even more uh, to wake me up and get me to swimming, wake me up, get me in the gym. Um, you know, when I want to shut it down and go to bed, well, I still had a training session that night. And um, yeah, man, is that. It was amazing. You know, I was happy. I think the first thing I did was look at my son and said, Jackson, daddy's back in. And my son goes, <laughs> he said, let's go. <laughs> I was like, okay, Jack, I see you, big dog. So, you know, that's motivation in itself. Sorry, guys, for your ears. Hey, that's what's up, man. <laughs> um, I also want to ask you about, so you made an appearance on The Ultimate Fighter in 2018, and you made it to the semifinals as well. Since that point until now, how do you think you've developed as a fighter? Man, uh, I wasn't ready for the opportunity that I had when I was in the UFC. Um, I know I went 3-0 in my first, my first three bouts in the UFC. But then when the com competition got tough and it was time to really step up and train harder and harder, you know, I just... You know, I thought it was what most fighters do. You know, you get a little soft. You start thinking you the man. And um, I went to a couple gyms. I was in and out of those gyms. And really, when John uh, John asked me to come and train with him, which at first I thought it was just a couple times, but it developed into what it is now. Um, it kind of reignited that flame to kind of like see the process of not just a world champion, but the process of the GOAT, the greatest MMA fighter to ever do this, uh, his process and what he goes through. I was lucky enough to, you know, be very close to it. I'm not in everything, but very, very close. And, uh, you know, we're around the same age and if he can still do it. I got less miles on my body. I know I can still do it. Awesome. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Anik. Maurice, Anik Subramanian, Fightbook MMA. If you and Jordan Heiderman win your fights, it would be a PFL final between two alumni from the Ultimate Fighter. What was your favorite part of the Ultimate Fighter experience? 
And what did you learn from your time on Team Gastelum? My favorite part was my team, fam. We had a we had a solid team. I still talk to Coach T, who is one of the guys who you always see with Calvin Gastelum. I still talk to Coach T. He still tells me the same thing. He still asks me, Mo, you need to go and do 50 get-ups at the practice. I don't care how tired you are. It's time to work. Do 50 get-ups. And then uh, my favorite time, my favorite time, I think, on Ultimate Fighter is the time I did have with Coach T and the rest of the heavyweights. Um, you know, I'm still friends with uh, with Justin Frazier, who I, I feel like, I'll say this, I feel like Justin Frazier got got the shaft. I think he should have got a chance more than a lot of us on, on the show. Um, but obviously you see that we were we, – we're the most dominant team. Most of us have been in the UFC at some point in time or have moved on to bigger and better things like Larissa Pacheco and myself. So, Great. And one more from me. I know there's been some heat between you and Henan in some of the previous press conferences. How do you feel about him? From what standpoint, you mean? Like as a fighter. I just told you he's tough. This man's tough, you know? He he's gonna move forward. He's throwing he's throwing haymakers from Africa, okay, or from Brazil all the way to uh, New York, whatever you want to call it. They from way the fuck over there, all the way over here. Um, and he's trying to finish the fight, man. You know, and uh, uh, that's awesome. I welcome that. Uh, you know, it's gonna be a tough fight. You know, we're not fighting uh, we're not fighting chumps out here. You know, we're fighting some of the best guys in the world. So. Uh, you just gotta you gotta have your A game, you know. It really doesn't matter what it looks like on paper. It matters who shows up that night. Awesome! Excited to watch it. Thank you so much, Max. What's up, Maurice? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You sound inspired, which I uh, I love to see. Um, so with a guy like Hennon, he's, I mean, the first MMA fighter that you have fought who's taller than you and has a longer reach. I know you said you just fought kickboxing against Xavier Bigney, Big B. Uh, but I was looking at your past fights, and I don't see anything since, I think, 2016, Chi-Chi Patterson. Or Chi-Chi, Chi Lewis Perry, sorry. Chop, Chopper Chai Lewis Perry. That one. Chopper Chai Lewis Perry that you Chichi. fought that was that big. So how do you deal with someone? How do you prepare... For someone with this much length, what do you do? Is it he's a an inch player? tall? Let's get let's get down to the brass tacks. It's about an inch taller than me, maybe an inch and a half, right? Uh, his arms are about an eighty-five, and they may be generous on those, but they may not be. Um, the height is whatever. The leg reach is virtually identical. Okay, I got long legs. Um, man, I mean, you ask him the same question because I bet you he may have not fought guys. Period my size. It, it, it may not happen. You know, John yeah. Jones reached 84 and a half inches and he uses his reach every bit of 84 and a half inches. And he's very good uh, at using that reach. So, you know, I, I just don't think uh ran ran is as good as John with using that reach. He uses it very well, but he also sticks his neck out. You know, we've seen it, you know, he's been, able, he's been able to get away with that shit just like me. Right. I've been able to get away with turning around and running away, right? I've been able to get away with dipping my head, right? This is something where I, th these are things that I can't do fighting a guy of his stature, right? And vice versa. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's things that we, we got to do to get better. And uh, you'll see Friday night uh, how we made those adjustments. Awesome. I do plan to ask him the same question. Thank you for your time, Maurice. Thank you. Richard. Hey, Maurice, uh, Rick Wright, Albuquerque Journal. Uh, you talked about training with John. Uh, how hands-on has he been with you? Does he spar with you, roll with you, or is he mostly an advisor? I uh, pretty much, I mean, we, we started this process training together. We still train together. You know, John has all of his coaches that advise him and all that, you know, they give me, they give me a little, a couple things here and there, but we started training together and that's, that's, you know, we're training partners. So I do most things with John. Okay. Uh, or my other teammates, right? We right. have a real tight group, of, uh, dedicated guys that come in that gym. And, you know, uh, in addition to John, we have the luxury of having 
you know, John bring out guys like Gordon Ryan or being able to get a little bit of stuff from Henry Cejudo or being able to go out of town and go to some of these cool gyms and, and meet these ex these fucking awesome athletes that show us a little bit here and a little bit there. So, um, you know, I train with them. Don't, don't you guys ever forget that. I get punched in the face by them all the time. It hurts and it sucks. You talked about Cejudo. Uh, did did John take you to Phoenix to work with him, or did Cejudo come to Albuquerque? How did that work? Say it again. Uh, you talked about Cejudo working with him. Uh, did he come to Albuquerque, or did you go to Phoenix with John? How did that work? No, not recently. Not, not, not I mean, not that I know of recently. Just when you saw him last time, and you know, we we I've been out there. Uh, you know, when I vacation sometimes in Arizona. Uh, they allow me to come into the gym. So, um, you know, I've been out there and trained with some of their guys there. You know, we're, we're talking about a, so a little bit of knowledge, but, you know, at that level, just 10 minutes of uh, talking, throwing some things by them, um, them kind of showing you one position, you know, that's better than them showing you no position. So I don't want you guys to sit here and think that I've been training with these guys and I've been working. No, I've been able, I, I've been, I've had the luxury to pick their brain for maybe five minutes and uh, just get a couple questions answered or get a position question answered that will help me moving forward. You know, you got to, you got to learn how to kind of ask the right questions for yourself and see if you can't get an answer or two, um, you know, I, and not expect a whole lot of hands on, you know, I'm nobody's, I'm not their fighter. I'm nobody's really fighter, you know? So um, I just try to get as much knowledge as I can with the people that are around me and the information that I possibly have uh, to, to to reach out to with the some of the great athletes that are around me. So, uh, Do you still live in Albuquerque, or are you, we're just here for camp? Uh -huh. Do you still oh, live in Albuquerque? Um, yeah, I live there. I'm full-time. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, all the way, baby. Do you spend any time at Jackson Wink anymore? No, I've. I tell everybody this. <laughs> I don't know why everybody thinks I still trade at Jackson Wink. Okay, um, I've parted ways with Jackson Wink uh, around just probably right after John. You know that whole thing happened with John for my own personal reasons. Um, and I've had the luxury of being able to train in a small closed group with John, with John and my uh, teammate and cornerman uh, Jaime Romo uh, for over three years now, I think, or something like that. But it's been quite some time since I stepped foot in there and actually trained. All right. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you. All right. Last question, Mills. What's going on, Crochet Boss? MMA Locker Room, part of Pub Sports Radio. How you doing today? How we doing, big homie? Oh, you know me, man. We good. Just spoke to I you about two weeks. Say that too. He feel me. Go ahead. <laughs> you already know, man. I just spoke to you about two, two days ago, man. Uh, you know, we spoke about some things, um, but I, I want to pick your brain on this, man. It's going to be a little bit different, too. You know, some fighters, you know, they might look at some things that they have physically and look at it as a defect. But you never let that affect you, you know, um, with the periphery or anything like that. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, giving people the confidence out there if their if their body's not the same as the other person, not to let that stop them to always go forward and pursue their dreams? Man, you know, it goes back to I used to not even think about using that as an advantage, but uh, it was John who actually told me. I said, "Yeah, man, you know, I got more peripherals and on one side and one side than the other, and whoop the whoop the bam." And uh, he was like, "All right, Maurice, so how do you use that to your advantage? All right, where's the advantage there?" So I broke it down with him. I was like, "Oh shit, <laughs> motherfucker, you right?" <laughs> so again, this is using you know, the people that I have access to, man. And I have access to some of the greats, uh, in certain, in certain, at certain, at certain times, I have access to just picking the brain of some of the greats, whether it be a coach, a high level athlete, his coach's coach, um, maybe even in life, right. Even in life and sometimes what to do next or, you know, how to do merch or so using, you know, the network that you have available to you is very vital. And I, and I tell not just fighters and, you know, coaches, like 
everybody. Assess your network and figure out how you can use it. You can help each other, you know. You can get to a point where you can get the information you need. You know, there's somebody out there. If you if you have a good, strong network of people, there there's information to go out there and get. Um, you just gotta go get it. Like if you have a if you have a, like a disability or or a difference, I don't even want to call it a disability, right? It's not a disability. It's just a difference. Uh, if you have a difference in what somebody else may have, if there's, if there's a possibility, you know, be creative and see how you can use that to your advantage. <laughs> you know, that's how I go through life. Got it, man. I like it. And uh, one other thing, man. So since we got, you know, two twin towers about to take off and fight. Uh, all right. So let's put this in a superhero mode. If you were to be a superhero and your opponent would be a superhero or a villain, who do you see you being and who do you see your opponent being? Break it down in a superhero type mode. Um, I don't know who he going to be. He, you know, he just, he reminds me of like a, Somebody who walks out with his chest out, like you know, like a Superman. I'm here, you know, chin high. You know, if you look at how he stands and how we face off, chest high, chin high. He has to feel like he's bigger. Like that's that's a mental thing for him. I don't give a fuck. Um, you could put me as a villain, baby. I want to be one of them, one of them ugly villains. You say I'm ugly. I'll be an ugly villain. Uh, sometimes the villain do win the win win the war. So, uh, and he has to come back and reassess. But that's not till next year. <laughs> so, uh, the villain would be the crochet boss. I love that. I always root for the spreading bad guys. Love though, I'll be spreading love. But just, just in the cage, I'm a villain. Okay, but when I get out of that cage, crochet boss is is full of love and yarn and crochets and, and hooks. crazy cats. Okay, you got me. All right, man. Best of luck. Best of skill. Can't wait to see you guys this Friday. Appreciate you. All right, Maurice. Thank you so much for your time. Today. That's a wrap. Appreciate you. Thank